something missing from him after this and told him that uh, he wants to be moved up where he was supposed to be. And then they changed it. So that was a good lesson for me and something I was able to carry on over with the mirror when he came not, into my state. Not to drift too far away from this fight, but what you're saying, uh, I've heard it a few times. Do you think too many guys are too consumed with trying to get down too far instead of fighting in a weight that they're comfortable at, where they could be healthier and can take punches better, like you're saying? I believe that the fighter should not have to go through any duress to make the way. If he does, then he's doing himself injustice. But this is a sport where, you know, guys who have different fields and bone structures um, compete in. So it's, if you look at uh, the, the, the Cuban team, amateur team, which I've been fortunate enough to study, the Russian amateur team, they select guys that they know will gel just right in the weight class. You don't see any stocky guys, you don't see any short arm guys. They select guys. For, for the job, it's just like in basketball, you know, you don't see too many five, eight stocky guards, you know, unless he's just exceptional. We can we can all count them on one hand, Bud Webb and uh, uh, Mugsy Bogues. <laughs> Bogue. So, uh, I mean, the other kid is playing now, Nate uh, Jones or whatever his name is, oh, but he, yeah, Robinson, he's an exception, you see. So there are exceptions, Joe Frazier in the heavyweight division, or Dwight Kwawe in the light of the division. There are exceptions that you can count on one hand. But Amir has a metabolism uh, that uh, will not allow him to gain a lot of weight in between the fight, and, but he has the bone structure of the welterweight. So uh, I think we made the right move. In the Colazo fight, the last fight, we saw a lot of improvement with them, but it was the first fight at a full 147, not yes. a catch weight or anything. Mm -hmm. You think that was a lot of it, like you're saying, just because it was more comfortable? Yeah, uh, of course, I think so. And, uh, and of course, some of the things that he learned and, and um, his uh, dedication to me, he kept his word, um, making sure that he practiced his craft in between fights. Was good for him. I think every fighter uh, that's been fighting since they've been nine years old, ten years old, at some point should take a long period of time off, a year or you know, at least eight months. And he did that and it had a rejuvenation effect. So he's a he's a fresh fighter right now and some of the things that he needed to put behind him, you know, they faded right on away. Now, Coach, uh, the side-by-side -side pictures that have been posted, you know, you can just see the difference from 140 to 147. You know, he's ripped. He, he, this mm -hmm. is his ideal weight. Mm -hmm. uh, it is because um, he's eating three meals a day. He'll eat breakfast tomorrow, um, and that's what's important. You, know, you just cannot take something out of him and think you can put it all back. If you really study the body, really have the right people in place for these kids, it's just not a good thing. So to all of a sudden put the body to a point of 48 hour, even longer, or shock period, uh, and deny the necessary nutrients, and deny the necessary uh, calories that you need. So look, everything that we can do, we did it. Come fight night, it's, it's like he's an arrow in my hand right now. Like everything's planned on Saturday night. You know, Floyd Mayweather, you've heard the name a million times, but we haven't seen Floyd fight a guy taller than him. We've seen him fight bigger guys, but not taller and faster. Uh, longer reach, everything else. Do you think that's going to be the one key? That there's a reason why maybe Floyd doesn't fight this type of fighters? Listen, um, Floyd Mayweather is not the fighter he is by accident. So uh, I think what people don't understand or realize is, is that Floyd has all different types of guys in his camp short and everything and that's what you want to do so I don't pay any attention to what people say or who's going to give this guy a problem or that a problem you know and then when you put his IQ with it um, and the fact that he's well trained and the fact that he works hard and he understands his sport Floyd Mayweather is not an easy fight and uh, speed alone will not beat him. 
What do you make of Oscar De La Hoya calling uh, Alexander versus Khan uh, the Mayweather sweepstakes? Well, it's good to hear, um, but I think that uh, it'll be other demands for that fight. Um, but quite naturally, if it's a situation where someone has a signature performance, I think it's worthy to be mentioned for that fight because, after all, uh, uh, Canelo got the fight off of uh, uh, Twitter. And, and you know things like that so um, you have to put their competition in that same class or you know or you could even take it a little above uh, up or down but you definitely have to merge it in that same class so it's depending on who they fought and and what they've been through I mean uh, Americans a silver medalist he's a two-time world champion so that lets me know that where he's been, he knows how to get back there. So I think the performance by uh, either fighter will dictate who wants that sweepstakes. And if they do it in such a fashion, uh, I think that they'll have something to stand on and have a real good case. Hey, Coach, one final question. During the final uh, conference call, uh, uh, Coach Cunningham kind of talked about you and obviously talked about knowing Alexander and Cunningham. And he said, you know, it kind of this week when he was going to see you, that's, you know, it was going to change the momentum of the fight for him, seeing that he's, you know, he, he wants to prove that he's one of the best coaches. And he, as he said, you know, he's, it's, it's kind of taking it kind of personal because, you know, it's business and he wants to prove that he's one of the best coaches. Listen, Kevin's resume stacks up against anybody. So, I mean, I don't look at it that way. Uh, I've been knowing he's a top coach, you know. Again, it's a business where people tend to look at situations the way they want to look at them. But, uh, you know, Kevin started from scratch, like I did. We started it, uh, we were down in Amateur, but people forget he had Corey, and he, and, uh, he also had, he brought Sakio back, you know. So he's proven his, his mouth. nothing to me because long before they knew me, I knew him. So he's a friend and he's a friend that I have the utmost respect for. So just friendly competition? Yeah, it is friendly competition. He wants to beat me and I want to beat him, but the main thing is that we stay true to each other because if the good Lord keeps him and I healthy for the next 15, 20 years, these young men here will be gone and be a new crop. So. important thing.